Well, hello everyone. Uh, we are getting uh, started here in just a few moments on our live weekly video discussing prayer. Just trying to get my camera situated here. Uh, we will get started here in just a few moments. We'll let a few people join us live uh, if that's what they're hoping to do. If not, uh, this video will be available to watch later, either on our Facebook page here or our YouTube channel. So, um, yeah, probably like two minutes and we'll get started. I'm just going to chill out and uh, I'm going to post something in the comments section here, our resource page that we use every week. And let's see. Right. Okay. Well, um, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Um, and if some more people join us here in a little bit, that's great. If not, um, again, you can watch this video later if that's what you choose to do. So I hope, um, is my hope and prayer that each of these different avenues of prayer are enriching in your life um, if you are engaging. And last week we talked about worship prayer. And, you know, as we said over and over last week, worship is one of the few responses that we have to the awe and the wonder and the majesty of God. And it is an opportunity to praise God because God is good. It is an opportunity to thank God for that goodness being manifested in our lives on a daily basis. So uh, just like in weeks past, I've attached the Google Doc to the comments section and in that Google Doc are steps on uh, how to engage in these different types of prayer that we're going through each week. And, you know, if you haven't been with us or uh, haven't, you know, at all, or if this is your first time or um, <clears throat> first time in, a, you know, a few weeks joining us, we are going through Mary Kate Morris's book, uh, a guidebook to prayer. And we're just taking it one chapter at a time. And in that book, she basically talks about a different method on how we can pray and engage God through prayer. And one of the things from the introduction chapter that I bring back every week, just so that we're mindful of it, is that uh, there are many different ways for us to pray. None are necessarily better than any other. Um, but, you know, prayer is, uh, or God is like a city. We read this quote in, in the introduction chapter, God is like a city and prayer is like avenues into the city. Some may be freeways and roads, some may be hiking and biking trails, but no matter what route you take, you are drawing closer into the city and therefore drawing closer to God. And so we just want to emphasize, you know, that all these different methods to, to prayer, um, some might really strike a chord with you and others might not. And that is totally fine. Um, but what we're trying to do, you know, especially during this season where we are, uh, you know, spending a lot of time by ourselves, probably in our homes, that, you know, it, there are different ways to engage God through prayer. And we want to show you um, just how many of those that there are. So today we're going to be looking at chapter 8 of Mary Kate's book. Um, and, you know, if you're interested in purchasing the book, in that uh, pinned comment, in the comment section, in that Google Doc, there's a link to uh, her book on Amazon. So if you want to buy it and follow us along there, that's great. But we're jumping into chapter eight today, 
which centers on daily reflection prayer, which is otherwise known as the prayer of examine. <clears throat> now, some of you may have heard that phrase before. Some of you might not have. Either way is fine. Um, but I will say that the examine, that daily reflective prayer, might just be my personal favorite uh, prayer style that Mary Kate suggests in her book because it is both simple and is both or is both simple and is life changing. Um, daily reflection prayer offers us an opportunity to be mindful of ourselves and how we are interacting with those around us on a daily basis. It forces us to be abiding disciples of Jesus. And that's one of the really uh, heavy emphasis points that we're going to be talking about today is abiding and what it looks like to abide. And so if we let it, this type of prayer can actually begin to change our behavior as we are formed into more Christ-like people. So Mary-Kate, she begins uh, this chapter out by talking about how Jesus' humanity um, or talking about Jesus' humanity and how much emphasis, you know, as a human, Jesus placed on prayer. She says, as a human, Jesus had limitations just as we do. Jesus was born and grew up in a family, family in the town of Nazareth. He learned carpentry from his father. He was involved in a trade uh, to make a living. In scripture, we discover that Jesus got tired Thirsty, hungry, angry, sad, jubilant. He was honored, betrayed, ridiculed, and loved. He suffered horrifically on the cross. <laughs> Jesus was like us in the limitations of his flesh and in the experiences of his life. Despite these limitations, Jesus regularly communed with God and reflected on his earthly life in prayer. In the Gospels, we see that Jesus prayed traditionally like a pious adult Jew, and he also went beyond praying regularly. He was a man who brought prayer into all of his life experiences. He is a model for us as we seek a close and thoughtful relationship with God. So it has been long debated throughout church history the nature of Jesus. You know, is he fully human? Is he fully divine? Um, is he both? Was he just a great prophet? Was he just a great teacher or rabbi? Um, and I will say these, uh, these debates can become very tiresome and consuming. But the important thing for us to grasp and I could go down a whole rabbit trail with this, but I won't for the sake of time. But the important thing for us to grasp is that, you know, what Christians ultimately believe is that uh, when Jesus was here with us on earth, he was both fully human and fully divine. Um, in some sort of mysterious way that we probably will never comprehend, Jesus was both fully human and fully divine. This is what we put our hope in. This is what we put our trust in that the divine God would take on the nature of humanity, that the incarnation was a sacrifice to live and breathe and even suffer like we do as humans. In this concept, it's so important because it impacts everything we do and everything we think. Um, as Christians, because Jesus took on the nature of humanity, we know that God knows what the human experience is like. We know that when God speaks to us, God is doing so from a place of understanding. You know, I can get uh, frustrated with people at times who, um, and I know they're probably doing it out of their, you know, the goodness of their heart, but they try to give you advice on something in life that they probably don't 
that they might not have experience in. So maybe I'm going through something, you know, difficult and someone who's never experienced that before is trying to tell me like, oh, just do this or just do that. And I'm like, you don't understand. You have never been in my shoes before. God is not like that. God is not some lofty being telling us, you know, just everything's going to be okay. It's all right. You know, God is one who has suffered and who knows what it's like to suffer and empathizes with us when we suffer. And so when we read about the life of Jesus in the Gospels, we know that Jesus is operating from a place of humanity. We know that when he emphasizes prayer the way he did, that, you know, maybe we should be emphasizing it too because Jesus um, was fully human. And maybe Jesus knows that the best way to truly be human is when we are abiding in God, abiding in the divine. That is is living out our humanity in the fullest capacity. Mary Kate, she lists, um, I, I thought it was really cool and I wanted to share um, all the ways, types, places, reasons, times, et cetera, et cetera, um, of prayer that Jesus embodied on earth. And it, it really is quite astounding that God in the flesh would still place such an emphasis on connecting with the divine. She says, Jesus prayed in all sorts of ways, alone, small groups, in large crowds. He used all types of gesture. He quoted scripture. He touched people. He looked up to heaven. He spoke aloud. He laid hands on people and he broke bread. He expressed different emotions, jubilation, great distress, grief, and deep agitation. Jesus prayed in all sorts of places, in the wilderness, in the mountains, in houses, in a boat, in a garden, in public areas, and on a cross. He prayed at different times, early in the morning, over several days, all night, during meals, after teaching, after his baptism, before healings and miracles, after successful events, and during times of distress. And Jesus prayed for all sorts of reason to overcome temptation, to refocus, to make decisions, to receive God's blessing, to perform miracles from multiplying food to raising the dead, to receive ecstatic vision, to praise God for good things, to bless children, to intercede for his disciples, to receive God's comfort, um, for prophetic intersection, for relinquishment, and to search for God's presence. Isn't that crazy? And it's, it's really cool. If you do have the book, I would, you know, suggest turning to this chapter and seeing that. And, and she lists all the scripture references for that. And it's just really cool to see, you know, how um, wide God's range is or Jesus's range was for prayer when he was here on earth. And I read all of that to you because I think it's important for us to grasp just how important prayer is. I think that we are naturally built doers in our culture. You know, we are taught to get things done, to be efficient, to get results. And not that those things are necessarily bad, um, but if we pursue them within the context of our faith without prayer, they will fail. Even if it doesn't seem like it at first, even if our pursuit seems successful at first, if we are not abiding, we will fail. Think of the parable of the sower, where the plant, you know, grows up really fast, and then it gets scorched um, because it had no root. Um, if we are not abiding, we will fail. And I want to clarify this, though, um, because this is not some you know, magical transaction that God makes with us that, you know, if we pray hard enough and in enough different ways, God will grant us success. God does not work 
like that. Um, we do not earn things because we pray hard enough or because we pray in enough different ways. If that were the case, we would be manipulating prayer to get what we want and God would just be manipulating us to do what God wants. And that's not how a loving and trusting relationship works. No, prayer is about abiding and we abide so that we know the heart of God. And when we pursue something, it is important to know the heart of God is revealed to us by the Spirit. As we abide, we grow. And when we operate as our own branch, disconnected from the vine, we will wither away. Mary Kate talks about the importance of, of abiding. And she says, at the end of Jesus's earthly life, he left two commands. Go and make disciples, which is found at the end of Matthew. And uh, which is the one we, we talk about the most, right? Go make disciples. And that's great. And then the one we talk about probably a little bit less found at the end of John is abide in me and I will abide in you. We as Christians often most give most of our energy and time to that first command and less to the second, but both are necessary. The two commands are a perfect polarity. A polarity occurs when two opposite ideas can't function well independently. A Christ follower needs to both go and abide. Jesus was active and stayed connected to his father. If you mainly go and pray little or mainly pray and act little, your relationship to Jesus becomes skewed. Jesus was active and prayed. Jesus prayed three times a day, but he would also go off by himself in the morning or in the evening to pray. Jesus took time in private to reflect on his day and on his tomorrow. This is the practice of daily reflective prayer, the prayer of examine. Reflection refers to a bending back as light reflects off of surfaces. Reflect, reflection is an act of bending back on a day and giving it careful consideration. A reflection gives an image, a bending back from the original. In reflective prayer, we invite God to give us God's image of our day. We invite God to review our day, thoughts, actions, and encounters for God's wisdom and insights. So the type of prayer we are pursuing today is exactly this. It is the reflection of our day, the bending back of our recent past, so that we can give it careful consideration and invite God to give us God's perspective on our day. This type of daily reflect, reflection prayer, and I'm quoting Mary Kate here, is commonly known as the prayer of examine. Saint Ignatius of Loyola, who was around in the uh, 15th and 16th century, developed this prayer for the Jesuits, a Catholic male religious order. And he taught that God was in all things, and so we want to listen for God in our day. He suggested the daily exercise occur twice, once in the afternoon, once in the evening. And um, I just want to say up front, and I, I'll probably mention it again, that, you know, just start with once a day. That's fine. Um, but... As you pursue the prayer of examine this week, remember that perhaps the most important thing you can do in your faith is abide. Because without abiding, there is no growth. We simply wither away. Abide in the goodness of God. Abide in the empathy of God. Abide in the friend that God is to you. Abide in the love of God. Because when you abide, you grow. So the prayer of examine, it has five really simple steps to it. 
And I would suggest, you know, like I just mentioned, trying it just once a day, uh, maybe before bed. That's when I find it to be uh, a really good time because, you know, you've had your full day, you're ready to, you know, retire that day and go into a new one. And so it's, it's a really good time to spend 10 to 15 minutes in reflection before you go to sleep. Um, so with these five steps, you know, I mean, you can spend however much time you want in them, but don't feel the need to spend more than two to three minutes per step. Um, you know, you don't have to set aside two hours before you go to bed to do this. It's just, you know, 10 minutes or so that really kind of helps you, you know, reflect on the day you just had to prepare you to go into tomorrow. Um, so I'm just going to read through these steps real quick for you. Um, but again, if you look at the Google Doc in the comments section, uh, they are all written out there for you. And then that way you can take that, you know, if you want to print it out or pull it up on your phone or something like that as you go to bed, they'll be right there for you to, to access. So step one is preparation. Prepare yourself by focusing on God's presence. You know, Jesus said to his disciples, I have said these things to you while I am still with you. Um, focus on God's presence as if God is right there with you. Step two, invitation. Invite the Holy Spirit to help you review the day. Um, in John 14, Jesus said, um, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. So invite the presence of the Spirit in. Um, the Spirit is everywhere. The Spirit is always amongst us. But I think there is something to us um, inviting the Spirit, making it a hospitable space for the Spirit to join in what we're doing. Step three is thanksgiving. Um, think back over the day and give thanks for all the gifts in the day. Jesus reassured his disciples also in John 14. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. So step four is reflection. So review your day. Um, think through, you know, everywhere you've gone, everywhere or everything that you did, you know, is as quickly as you can. It's, you know, you don't have to think through every single second, but, you know, just generally, you know, what did I do in the morning? What did I do in the afternoon? What did I do in the evening? Um, and ask these questions. When did I love as Jesus loved today? And when did I not love as Jesus loved today? I think those are really good questions for us to ask because um, there are probably many times when we don't love as Jesus loved. And it's not, um, it's not a, a situation where I think, you know, Jesus is, is trying to shame us, um, but it's a situation where it's just calling us to reflection. It's calling us to be, um, to continue to abide. And then, um, then finally, the last step is resolution. Ask God to guide and take care of any concerns that rose up during the examination. And pray for God's help for tomorrow. Jesus, at his last gathering with his disciples, told them, My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. So I want to, and I just realized uh, that I attached the wrong Google Doc link, so I'm going to fix that real quick. And while I do that, um, I want to open up, you know, if you have any questions or thoughts on this prayer of examine um, that, uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions or 
you know, whatever thoughts about it, feel free to um, type those out in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you guys and uh, yeah, answer anything that Maybe I'll be able to answer. Who knows if I will be able to anyways. But uh, yeah, so feel free to, to ask those if you have any. If not, that's fine too. Um, all right, I am attaching a new comment. This should be the right one. All right, there we go. All right, well, we have the right document up there now, um, I believe, and uh, yeah, use that. I hope that the prayer of examine, you know, is something that will be helpful for you. I hope that you are able to connect with God in an abiding sense on a deeper level than before. And I hope that it cultivates a you know, a simple pattern of reflection. It's something easy to do. It's 10 minutes maybe um, of your day for you um, that will lead you to growth and to change in your life. So my prayers are with you. My blessings are over you. And I really hope that this is a way for you to, you know, remain attached to the vine, to, um continue to, you know, grow in your relationship with God. So blessings to you all. Um, seriously, feel free to message me on Facebook, just on my personal page. If you have any questions or um, anything like that, or anything that I can be personally praying for you, I would love to do that. Um, but yeah, we will, uh, you know, hopefully see you soon as we're, you know, our church is talking about, you know, potentially getting back together here in the, you know, somewhat near future. Um, and I think some of those details might be, you know, released here in the cup in the coming weeks. So um, we are excited to potentially see you again. And uh, yeah, it's good stuff. So, all right, we will see you later. Goodbye, everyone. Have a good week.